Well, welcome. In the previous video, you should have already watched. That was all about all the parent functions, the eight parent functions that you need to know. So again, I can't stress enough the importance of making sure you know uh, what the parent function for each of those are going to look like and some of the key points for those parent functions. Um, so know the name of them, the equation, and the graph that corresponds to those. Um, so in this video, we're going to start to look at, well, what's the whole point of knowing those parent functions? What's the importance of that? Um, so we're going to be looking at some examples, uh, like you'll see here, where we're going to be graphing uh, an equation. And so we're going to try to figure out, well, what's a good window when we go to graph this on our calculator? What would be a good or appropriate window to use that would allow us to see the entire graph? So we're going to see how we can use what we know about parent functions and uh, so we can figure out how to figure out what would be the best window to graph our, our equations in. So with that, let's look now at some of these examples. Okay, so here we have um, the function g of x equals the absolute value of x plus 25 minus 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to graph this. But let's actually just go ahead and do that. And you'll see that when we go to graph this, it's not going to be seen, at least not all of it, it's going to be seen on the screen for our calculator. So if you have your calculators, once you get those out, turn them on and go to a graphing screen. I'm going to clear this out. Again, just as a reminder, if you have other stuff on your calculator and you want to clear it out, just go to the Home button, hit New Document. I don't want to save it. Now everything's all fresh and ready to start over. Okay, so we're going to type in. Now we're going to graph the absolute value of x plus 25 minus 10. So in order for us to do that, we have to tell the calculator that we're going to do, use the absolute value. Now you might think that if you hit Control and Equals, this is not the absolute value symbol, so don't use that for the absolute value. Um, that means something different, so we'll just hit Escape. The easiest way to do absolute value is just to type in the letters A, B, S for absolute value, and then in parentheses put what we're going to take the absolute value of, which would be X plus 25. And then close off the parentheses for the end of our absolute value piece. So that is a piece that we, that we want inside the absolute value. And then type minus 10 and hit enter. Now you can see that there's actually a small little portion of our graph that we can see, but obviously that's not all of it. So we want to figure out, well, how could I move the screen to get a better view of the graph? Now granted, we could just grab the graph and move it around until we came up with the uh, best screen, but that is not going to be the most useful way. And in fact, you might have a question on the quiz where I'll ask you uh, what would be appropriate window settings for us to be able to see the graph on the screen. So we want to make sure we know how to go about doing this. So let's go back to our equation. And let's look at the parent function. This is why this is so important. The parent function for the absolute value has a vertex here at 0, 0. So that means the x value for our vertex is when the piece inside the absolute value is zero. So now, looking over here, I want to figure out what would x have to be for that piece inside of absolute value to also be zero. Well, so right now we're ignoring the minus 10, and we're just focusing on that absolute value of x plus 25. So I've got to figure out what would x have to be for us to end up with zero inside the absolute value. And if you're thinking negative 25, you're correct. So the vertex here, the x value is going to be negative 25. Now to figure out the y value, well, hopefully you can guess what to do now. We would put negative 25 in for x, and that would give us the y value. So negative 25 plus 25 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And 0 minus 10 gives us negative 10. So there's your vertex. So our vertex here that was at 0, 0, is going to be moving down here where x is negative 25 and y is negative 10. So somewhere down in quadrant 3. Now, what does that mean for our window settings? I want to make sure that my window is going to be able to see that vertex. And so if my vertex is at negative 25, negative 10, I want to make sure that my window is going to be a little bit to the left of that and a little bit to the right. Um, so that way I could see plenty of the uh, graph. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I spread this out far enough. So I'm going to go from negative 50 as my smallest value for x. And then I want to have a larger number, a maximum value for x. Now I don't want to use 0. I want to make sure that 
when I have my screen, like if I look at this piece, I want to make sure that my screen is going to at least have the y-axis included. So then that way if there's a y-intercept, which there is, that I can see where that location would be. So I'm going to do just a positive 5, just so we have a little bit beyond the uh, where x is 0. So that way we can see the y-axis included in our screen. Now let's look at the y values that we would have along the y-axis. Well, if you think about this, our vertex, the lowest point is at negative 10. So I want to make sure that my screen is going to go um, a little bit further than that. So I'm going to start at my screen at negative 20. And I'm going to have it end at a positive 20. That way I can make sure I see plenty of my absolute value. And then if I have a y-intercept, hopefully I'll be able to see it with that. So now let's go to um, our graph again. And we're going to go to Menu, Window, Window Settings. So I'm going to set my x minimum for my graph at what we had of negative 50. Hit Tab to go to the next box, and I'm going to have my maximum value be positive 5. We'll leave this set to be auto. Our y minimum, we're going to do negative 20. And our y maximum, so tab down and click positive 20 and hit Enter. And now we can see a nice absolute value function. We can see the vertex. We can see the x-intercepts. I can see the y-intercept. So that is a really good graph that we're looking at. Let's look back at our notes and see what else we need to find. It says, what is the domain and range of the function? Now, if you watched the previous video, which you should have, I talked about the fact that the domain is always going to be all real numbers unless it's one of our special situations where we divide by x or take the square root of x. Because here, I could put any number I want in for x, so my domain is going to be all real numbers. My range, however, remember our vertex is at negative 10, so that means our vertex starts at negative 10, and from there it's going up. The reason why I know it's going up without having to look at a graph is we can see that outside the absolute value is positive. It's just like a parabola in, in front of the x squared. If it's positive, it's going to open upwards. So that means from negative 10, it's going infinitely up. So we'll say the range is where y is greater than or equal to negative 10. So that is how we find the domain and range for that using our parent functions. Well, what about the graph of y equals or g of x equals the uh, square root of x minus 8 plus 5? Well, I want to start out by figuring out where, where would my vertex be. Well, let's look at the parent function. Again, this is why you want to make sure that you memorize these. You don't always have to pull these out. Um, but if you look at the parent function, zero, the coordinate 0, 0 is included because 0, I can take the square root. If I can put 0 in for x, I can take the square root of that and get 0 as my answer. So 0, 0 is included. And then it's this arcing line, whereas x is increasing, y is also increasing. So that's the graph that we're looking at. Oh, and then going back to this, similar to the previous problem, this vertex, 0, 0, occurs when we have 0 inside of our absolute, or inside of our square root. So I want to take and apply that same concept down here to say what would x have to be for us to have 0 inside of our square root. Well, if, eight, if x was 8, 8 minus 8 would be 0. So that means our vertex is going to be at 8, where x is 8. And to figure out what the y value would be, we put 8 in for x. 8 minus 8 is 0. Square to 0 is 0. Plus 5 gives me 5. So my vertex is at the coordinate 8, 5. And again, the reason why that is, is because since your um, x value for vertex is 0, because taking the square root of 0, I want to figure out now with the new equation what would x have to be for me to end up taking the square root of 0. Well, x would have, have to be 0, uh, would have to be 8. So now I have my vertex. So now I want to figure out, well, what would be a good window setting? Because I know if I just think about what my graph would look like, my vertex is going to be at the coordinate 8, 5, so it's going to be somewhere over here, and then it's going to be looking something like that. So I want to make sure that my screen is going to show me all of that. So my window, my smallest x value, I want to have a negative number. So maybe we'll do like negative, I don't know, negative 5. I want to make sure that we're using a larger number, so that way we can, it doesn't want, we don't want it to be too large though. So I'm going to go up to maybe 15. 
So we'll go from negative 5 to 15 along our x-axis. Our y-axis, again, we want to make sure we include the x-axis. So maybe we go at negative 5 again. But we don't have to go as high if we don't want to because our vertex is at 5, and it's going to go up, and it's slow, gradually going up. So we're going to have maybe, I don't know, let's use 15 or 10. Yeah, let's use 10. So we'll go from negative 5 to 10 for our y-axis and from negative 5 to 15 along our x-axis. So let's go back to our graph. I'm going to create a new graph here. I'm going to go to this wind window settings. There we go. And so we said it was going to be negative 5 to 15 here. And then we'll go down and we'll do negative 5. And I think we said 10 for our maximum. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be pretty good. We expect that our vertex will be somewhere over here at negative or at positive 8, positive 5. So let's graph this now. So we're just going to type in the square root, control x squared. Fax is the square root. Now you got to be very careful. If I type in x minus 8, whoops, everything that I type in now will be under the square root. So if I type in x minus 8 and then say, okay, well now we want plus 5, well you notice that when I type in the plus 5, it's still underneath the square root. So I want to make sure I hit the right arrow to move my cursor outside of the root and then type in plus 5 and hit enter. And sure enough, there's the start of our graph and we can see it's arcing up and to the right. So now it says, what is the domain and range for this function? Well, the domain for this is not going to be all real numbers. Just move this. The domain is going to be, because it starts here, where x is 8, and it goes infinitely to the right. So we'd say x is greater than or equal to 8. The range we see starts at where y is 5, and it goes infinitely up. So we're going to say the range is where y is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, let's look at another kind of example here. We're going to look at the story problem. It says, Stephen, who is 1.7 meters tall, dives off of a 3-meter springboard. An equation modeling his height in meters above the water at time x in seconds is given by that equation. So we're going to create a graph that would be helpful for determining the maximum height of his dive and how long it lasts. So we're just going to jump into our graph here. So let's go to our graphing calculator. Create a new graph. And we're going to type in the equation that we're wanting to graph here, the uh, negative 4.9x squared plus 4.5x plus 4.7. And hit Enter. Now this is a nice parabola because I can see everything that I want. However, we're dealing with the story problem. When we're dealing with the story problem, I'm just worried about quadrant one. I don't care about when x is negative and y is negative, so I don't care about all this other stuff. So I want a better screen here that would focus in on just what I'm wanting to, to notice. Now, my y scale, well, actually, let's start with your x scale. Uh, we do want to include some negative numbers, so let's we'll start at maybe negative one, so that way we can see our y axis. And then we want to go far enough out where we'll be able to see our graph. So I'm just going to go... Uh, from negative 1 to 5, maybe that's a little bit much, but we'll just do negative 1 to 5. And for our y-axis, we'll go from negative 1 up to 7 to make sure that we can see the whole thing. So let's go to Menu, Window Zoom. So again, we're going to do negative 1, tab down and hit 5, tab down and make this negative 1, and then make this 7. So now we can see our graph. So we can see the whole thing, so this is good. But now the question is asking us to find the domain and range in the context of this problem. Well, again, we don't care about anything other than quadrant 1. So quadrant 1, our domain, is where x is going to start at with being 0. Because that's where this person would be jumping from. So where x is 0, to this point down here, well, i got to figure out, well, what is that point? So if you go to Menu, Trace, Graph Trace, it puts this little cursor on our screen. I don't know why it went so low, but we don't need it that low. Uh, but we're going to move our cursor to the left or to the right using our arrows there. We want to find where it exactly hits the x-axis, and that's going to be called a zero. 
And if you look down here in the bottom right, now the way my settings are set up, instead of giving us 1.540, it's saying 3e negative 12. Just means 3 times 10 to the negative 12th power, which would be a, a decimal followed by 11 zeros and a 3. So pretty much 0. So we're going to put uh, 1.54 is going to be the largest value in our domain. So let's go back to our notes. So the domain here, we would say starts at 0. And it ends at 1.54. Now let's look to see, well, what would your range be? So if I hit, now the range is not referring to the y-intercept. I want to figure out what is my maximum point. So again, you just move the arrow to the left, or you can drag your cursor, I think, if you do that on your screen. Uh, we want to try to find where exactly is that maximum value. And all I care about, again, if I look down here, I don't care about the x value, I care about the y value, because that tells me that y there is at, whoops, lost it, our y value is at 5.73. So our range starts at 0, and it ends at 5.73. Now we're not going to do the next example. If you want to do the next one on your own, you can. But I want to end just by talking about a couple of things here. So these are some things to make sure that you include to have a good graph. Um, one of the things is going to be when we're working with asymptotes, um, it's important that we use dotted lines to represent asymptotes unless we're working with the x or y axis. Then we can just leave it. So let's just take a second now to look at this equation, y equals 1 divided by x. Remember we talked about asymptotes in the previous chapter. An asymptote is just an imaginary line where the graph is getting really close to, but it's never actually touching. And so for this one, we said we had an asymptote of the x-axis and the y-axis. Or I said it was better to say x equals 0 for the vertical line and y equals 0 for the horizontal line because that's essentially what they are, the equations of lines. And so the reason why we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 is because we can't divide by 0. I can't put 0 in for x, so x would never end up being 0. So that would be one asymptote. And the fact that I can never divide 1 by a number and get 0 as my answer tells me I would have an asymptote where y is 0 because you're never going to have an answer of y being 0. So let's see how that changes from our parent function to this one here where I have 1 divided by x minus 5. Well, I'm going to have asymptotes here. I just have to figure out what are the asymptotes. So remember, we're going to have an asymptote when our denominator is 0. So I've got to figure out, well, what would x have to be to get 0 in our denominator? Well, x would be 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, so x would end up never being 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to have an asymptote right here. So now I want to figure out, well, what's my y asymptote going to be? Well, my y asymptote is still 0 because I'm, I can't take 1 divided by anything and end up with 0 as my answer. So since my y axis or y equals 0 is my asymptote, it's already there, so I don't need to draw a dashed line there. I just, need one, I just need a vertical asymptote represented by a dashed line where x is 5. So now I can just sketch a graph of what this would look like. So that's what this equation would look like if I had to graph it. Now, when is the asymptote uh, for the y value? When is it not going to be equal to 0? Well, let's say if I had an equation like this. So in this scenario, for my y, so my x, my asymptote for my x would still be 5, because I still can't have 5 minus 5 or 0, so that asymptote would be the same. But my other asymptote for, what, for the y equals, this fraction can't be 0, so that means if this fraction can't be 0, that means my answer for y will never end up being 0 plus 3, or 3. So if that were the case, I would have an equation that would look like this. So that's how we work with asymptotes. So again, it's very important to know these parent functions so you know what they look like, so you know um, how to change your new equation. So we're going to stop the video here. So hopefully, after watching these two videos, you have a better understanding of how to be able to do this so you'll be able to successfully complete your assignment. So with that, good luck.